Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and our Foundation Concepts video tutorial series. In this video tutorial I'm going to be talking about creating sun stars in our landscape photographs and the idea of the sun star for me in a lot of my shots is to try to create more of a graphic element of the sun to tighten the composition up. Clearly it's subjective when this may or may not work for you but in the most basic sense taking the point source of the sun and making it more of a graphic element in the shape of a star is going to be a matter of stopping our lens down to close to the smallest f-stop or uh, the smallest f-stop. This particular lens is a 16 to 35 f2.8 Canon L series zoom lens and it stops down to f22. I'm going to show you a series of images here where I'm shooting from the tripod and what is going to be changing in these shots is my f-stop and then also my shutter speed. As I stop down here um, I'm changing my shutter to keep the relative exposure close to the same. This exposure was made at f8. You can see the sun is just starting to break over the horizon in the image and as I stop the lens down there to f11 and then to f16 and then to f22 it's very obvious to see that relative to the first exposure at f8 the sun is becoming more and more of a graphic element and that element is in the shape of a star. Um, different lenses are going to create a different star effect that's going to be based on the aperture blades and other qualities of the lens um, but in the most basic sense we're going to get the best sun star at close to the smallest aperture or the smallest aperture on the lens. The other thing that I would say about making sun stars is that a lot of the times we're going to get the best effect when we just use a portion of the sun wrapping around an object. In this case uh, it's the horizon, um, but you might use the sun coming around uh, a tree or you might use the sun coming around the edge of a building. Just using a little bit of the disk of the sun is going to lead to the most dramatic effect. One of the really neat things about digital capture is if in fact it is a building or it is a tree where your camera position is going to be um, the critical factor in terms of wh where you position the sun relative to uh, an object like a tree or like a building you can just look on your LCD and you can figure out uh, when you're getting the best effect. Now if you know about the optical aberration of diffraction then you might be thinking Craig, if you stop all the way down to f22 to make the sun more of a graphic element in the shape of a star, you're going to lose overall image sharpness to diffraction. And we have a video about diffraction if you want to learn about diffraction. If you're thinking that, then you'd be right. In this particular image, um, the interesting thing about this composition is that the exposure, because I stopped down and I kept my ISO the same, to keep the relative exposures the same, my shutter speed was getting longer and longer. And I believe this is a two second exposure. So that means that there's a motion blur on the water that's moving and a little bit of a motion blur on the clouds. So if I have diffraction in those areas, the loss of sharpness is not really going to matter because they're already blurred due to motion. But the uh, two static subjects that I have in the scene are these lines of jetties and if I ever wanted to print this really big at f22 those areas would be soft so what could I do? Well I could do what I've done here I could shoot at the smaller apertures to get the sun star effect but then I could shoot the image at an overall sharper aperture like f8 like I've done here and then I could blend those exposures so let's look at that work real quick in Photoshop Inside of Photoshop, I've gone ahead and I've opened up the image that I shot at f22 that has a nice sun star and the image that I shot at f8 that doesn't have such a nice sun star but it's going to be sharper overall. Since I like most of the image that I shot at f22 and it's really only the lines of the jetty that I want to bring in, I'm going to copy this image and put it on top of the image I shot at f8. I'm going to do that using a keyboard shortcut. On a Mac it would be Command A Command C on a PC Control A Control C that select all and copy and I'm going to click on my F8 image and I'm going to do a Command V on a Mac Control V on a PC to put the F22 image on top of the F8 image. 
let's just go ahead real quick and copy the background and let's name this layer 22 and star and let's name this layer 8 for F8 and sharp. Now what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to the F22 star layer. I'm going to hit the X key to make black my foreground color. I'm going to hit the B key to get the brush. And now what I'm going to do is hide bridge. So we'll just hide it like that. And I'm going to change the viewing mode here. Bring the image back in. And I want to zoom way in on this image so that we can get a sense of what's happening here in the work. I'm about to do and why we would do it. I just hit the Z key to bring up the zoom tool and now I'm just going to click on my mouse and make this image much bigger. I'm going to hold down the space bar, move the image, and now we've really zoomed in on the jetty area. If you look at that jetty area, that's how sharp it is at F22, but I want you to look at it at F8. And even with the quality of this video, you ought to be able to see the effects of diffraction on that line of rocks. Again, that's F22 where I have diffraction and the line of rocks is not that sharp. And there's F8, a much overall sharper aperture and the jetty sharper. Of course, the water changes quite a bit and the water changes quite a bit because at F8 I had a lot faster shutter speed, about a quarter of a second. Stopping the lens down to F22 to get the sun star effect in two seconds, the water has smoothed out. But if I wanted to print this big and I really wanted that edge of the rock, then all I need to do is paint on this mask with black over the rocks, and that will conceal the rocks on the F22 layer to reveal the sharp rocks on the layer bef below. So if I get the brush, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and paint at 100% as I start painting on the rocks, and I'm going to get a really small brush here, I'm going to reveal the sharp of the F8 layer below. And the other thing that I could do here is I could definitely come in and paint on this mask in other places and blend some of the textures. But essentially what I wanted to do was just show you the effects of diffraction and just show you how we might blend to deal with that. And let's just go ahead and paint all the way down the line of these rocks. And I'm not doing the work perfectly, but this way you'll get the gist and you'll see what the mask looks like here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Z key and hold down on a Mac the Option key on a PC, the Alt key to zoom back so we can see the whole image, space bar to move the image over. This is what our mask looks like. You can see where I've painted to reveal the sharper rocks. And now we have blended to get um, the best of both worlds. And that's what I would do if I was shooting a landscape and I wanted to get the sun star but I didn't want diffraction to hurt me in areas where I wanted the image uh, to be sharp. Would love to hear your feedback about this video. Just real quick at the very end here I'll say that uh, you could uh, think about the same technique on any point source of light that you're shooting into if you wanted to get the star effect that would include let's say shooting a skyline where you wanted to make lights that you're shooting into uh, become more of a graphical element but it just reminds you that it might be a very good idea to shoot at two different apertures, sharp aperture and the aperture that would give you the sun star effect want to say a big thank you to you for being here on the Mindful Eye. I hope to see you again real soon, everybody.